When you think of Tokyo, most people think of its efficient use of density, its high population, and of course, the trains. But one thing I don't see talked about is its cycling culture. I just got back from Japan, and for most of my trip, I stayed in two suburbs within Tokyo. While I was there, I couldn't help but notice the abundance of bikes and overall cycling within the city. And I'm not talking about a bunch of guys cycling for sports. These were organic trips from people of all genders and age groups, using bikes as a method of transportation. I also hadn't considered Tokyo as much of a city for cycling, so I signed up for an e-bike sharing program and got pedaling. The rules for cycling in Japan are a bit different than those in Canada and the United States. Bikes are encouraged to stay on these blue lines painted on the road, but some roads also have cycling markings up on the sidewalk. At intersections, you're supposed to stop at these markers on the sidewalk, and then follow the pedestrian crossing signal when it's time to cross. If you find the conditions to be unsafe, you're permitted to ride on the sidewalk, regardless of whether there are any markings or not. And finally, if you see this sign on a local street, you're permitted to ride against one-way traffic. At first glance, these blue markers appear to be bike lanes. After all, it's a bicycle marking and it's on the road, right? They're neither like the on-street bike lanes that I'm used to, or the sharrows that I've seen in my city. A vast majority that I encountered didn't allocate any additional space for cycling. They were just lines painted in the existing lanes, so you didn't really get any buffer from traffic. Additionally, they're not like sharrows if they don't encourage cyclists to take the lane and ride in the center. Essentially, they're just reminders to stay on the side of the road. However, these weren't the only issue with these lanes. Vehicles are consistently parked and stopped in these lanes. This means as a cyclist, you have to constantly weave in and out of the lane, risking a collision with a vehicle. The Metropolitan Government of Tokyo has stated they want to work with the police to crack down on this, but I didn't see any enforcement or any impact from this. For these reasons, these blue lines can't be considered cycling infrastructure and are equivalent to having nothing at all. The real cycling infrastructure lies on the sidewalks. Many large roads have these dedicated areas on the sidewalk reserved for cyclists, marked with signs like this. This is where you'll start to see everyone else cycling. The design of these lanes varies from street to street and ward to ward. And the delineation from the pedestrian area varied a lot as well, with many simply varying the brick color, or sometimes painting a line. In a few cases, I found full separation, like this cycle track in Nagoya, or this cycle track in Kodo City. The lack of consistent marking leads to a very inconsistent experience, not only for the cyclists, but for the pedestrians walking as well. And I believe it's for this reason that bike lanes were consistently full of pedestrians, whether I was in Tokyo, Osaka, or Nagoya. Tokyo's local streets, mostly through its suburbs, are very narrow and heavily discouraged through traffic and speeding. Its speeds were kept to 30 km per hour or less, and the design enforced this. Close buildings and objects would make speeding uncomfortable, slowing down drivers and increasing awareness of pedestrians and cyclists. While some of the major streets had sidewalks, most of the local streets didn't. They did sometimes have these white lines painted on them, around 3 meters wide. I originally mistook these for sidewalks, as pedestrians seemed to subconsciously walk within them. However, they seem to be more of an indicator for the safe driving area, as outside this line, you would find street furniture like light posts, trash disposal, and other personal belongings from the homes and shops fronting them. While you might think that the lack of sidewalks would feel unsafe, it actually felt a lot safer, as vehicles were not able to speed as easily due to the road design. In my experience, this was the backbone of the protected cycling network, and the area where I encountered the most cyclists. A lot of the cyclists I saw here were children, or mothers taking their young kids on child seats mounted on the bike, running errands. Even on larger roads without dedicated lanes, cyclists would just ride on sidewalks, avoiding the dangerous roads entirely. While this generally worked, it did cause issues on narrow sidewalks or those crowded with pedestrians. And as an aside point, if you do find yourself visiting Tokyo, I highly recommend renting an e-bike and cycling around the local streets. It doesn't really matter what neighborhood it is, most of the neighborhoods I found within Tokyo were amazing to cycle in. It's a lot to see, and it's totally safe. The sidewalk protected bike lanes are doing a lot right for cyclist safety, as they provide full separation from vehicular traffic. A lot of the bike lanes in my city are doing this, and it provides a much better experience than riding on the road. However, the lack of consistent design and delineation from the pedestrian area leads to a lot of avoidable conflict. The Dutch solved this by using red asphalt for bike infrastructure. While this is one solution, the key here is to use a consistent design treatment to make it clear for pedestrians and cyclists which area they should stay in. And in busier areas, 
the use of physical separation can also help as well. The general attitude from pedestrians also doesn't seem to respect them just yet, but this is something that many cities that are new to sidewalk protected bike lanes will have to get used to, and I'm no stranger to that. I also haven't touched yet on the conflict point at intersections. The sidewalk protected bike lanes end just before the intersection, with no clear way of getting to the bicycle crossing. Protected intersection design guides in many cities have established clear ways to keep pedestrians and cyclists safe here. Designs like these keep pedestrians and cyclists safe at crossings by providing clear areas to wait and cross. Most of these designs are obviously inspired by Dutch guidelines, which really is the gold standard of how to design a safe intersection. I also want to touch a bit on the cycling rules. Allowing cyclists to ride against one-way traffic on smaller streets was very good policy, and something that other cities should definitely take a page from. But allowing cyclists to legally ride on sidewalks when it's unsafe seemed to be something of a double-edged sword. On one hand, it immediately completes the safe cycling network between local streets and those that don't have protected bike lanes yet. This permits all age and gender demographics to use bike lanes to get around safely as a serious mode of transportation. This is great, but on the other hand, it also removes the pressure on municipal governments to build dedicated infrastructure. Challenging the status quo requires leadership and action, as well as support from the public. Shifting the allocation of space may involve reducing vehicle parking spaces or lanes, something that people perceive to be a much bigger issue than it actually is. Overall, Tokyo has a pretty good cycling network, and it's great to see so many people using bikes to get around their city. The Metropolitan Government of Tokyo has committed to expand over 600 kilometers of bike lanes by 2030. While this is a great step in the right direction, a lot more can be done by standardizing the design of the bike lanes and focusing also on intersections. But I want to know what you think. Do you agree with these recommendations, or is there something else that should be improved instead? Thanks for watching.